Good evening, my name is Melissa Chang. I'm a colon and rectal surgeon at St. Joseph Mercy Ann Arbor Hospital in Michigan. I would like to thank the program chairs as well as our session chairs, Dr. Popovich and Dr. Shaw for the opportunity to present as part of Robot Wars. All is not quiet on the Western Front. I have no disclosures. I am a colon and rectal surgeon and I will be discussing uh, robotic surgery and other fields. Uh, this involved a lot of YouTube deep diving. So here we go. So real world surgical robots are a fairly new development in healthcare. The inception started in the 1980s with a stereotactic neurosurgery system. The orthopedic interest was due to surgical failures in early hip replacements with poor fit and stability, and RoboDoc was born in 1992. This was an image-based autonomous system for accurate preparation of the femoral bone and anatomic placement of total hip components. However, this was not FDA approved until 2008. There was increased traction and interest with the founding of Mako Surgical Corp in 2004, and this was a tactile surgical arm and patient-specific visualization platform that was developed. It increased the ability for more accurate preparation of bone and to place implants, and they showed improved patient outcomes and reduction of overall procedural costs. So this showed almost a $2,000 difference between robotic-assisted total knee arthroscopy versus manual, lower post-procedural expenses, decreased overall index facility cost to payers, as well as reduced readmission rate. There was no difference, however, in length of stay. This was purchased by Stryker in 2013 for $1.65 billion. So to show you a little bit about how this technology works, a quick video, here we go. You have the dynamic joint balancing and robotic arm-assisted bone preparation. These three core features were adapted to enable a Mako total knee procedure with triathlon, enhanced planning, CT data is segmented to create a 3D model of the patient's bony anatomy. The Mako Total Knee application allows you to position the triathlon implant on your patient's virtual anatomy prior to the procedure. This patient-specific preoperative plan enables more accurate implant positioning to plan. During surgery, bone registration and verification are designed to align the 3D model with your patient's knee. Dynamic joint balancing. Mako provides you flexibility to modify the pre-op plan. After completing a kinematic assessment of the joint, you can perform intraoperative adjustments to optimize implant placement. Robotic arm-assisted bone prep. The Mako total knee application does not require alignment instruments or cutting guides. Similar to Mako partial knee, virtual boundaries assist the surgeon in executing bone resections to the final plan. These virtual boundaries have the potential to protect essential anatomical structures of the knee during bone preparation, including the PCL and the popliteal artery. So the next step is spine surgery. So the global market for spine surgical robots is estimated to be $124.2 million in 2020 and is expected to reach $455 million by 2026 with a rapid annual growth rate of 20%. The idea behind robotic approach is that this limits radiation exposure with improved precision in less OR time. However, there is a high capital expense associated with each robot estimated to be upwards of one to $1.5 million per robot. And the current technology is limited to the placement of pedicle screws. However, Medtronic sees clearly a lot of potential as they acquired Maser Robotics for $1.7 billion in 2018. And to quickly show you a little bit about this technology. mounted robotic arm ensuring a small OR footprint, a surgeon control panel in the stair, the foundation to a robotic guidance solution going beyond individual pedicles to enable the benefits of an entire construct design. Planning may take place prior to the surgery using the patient's pre-op CT scan or during the surgery using O-arm scan it plan. After selecting the region of interest in the CT image, each vertebra is segmented using an anatomical landmark recognition algorithm. 
From here, the planning interface displays the ideal orientation for each vertebra, where implants can be added and optimized to the ideal size and trajectory. Adjust implant positions in AP, sagittal, and coronal views with the ability to fine-tune trajectories by scrolling slice by slice in all three planes. For ease of use, implants added at adjacent levels will populate with the same angle to midline as the previous level. Manipulate each implant for easy rod passage and a mechanically sound construct. The resulting plan is ready to be transferred to the operating room and can be shared with the staff to anticipate instrument and implant needs. To execute this optimized plan, surgeons need the precision of robotic guidance supported by a platform of integrated technologies, instruments, and implants. Robotic precision is achieved through critical setup steps, rigid bed and patient fixation that maintains the stability necessary for robotic precision. A 3D camera that maps the surface of the operating field, providing topographical data for collision-free and efficient arm movements during instrumentation. Patient registration is accomplished with the O-arm, or CT to fluoro, as shown here, using two fluoroscopic images, AP and lateral, utilizing the 3D marker. Each vertebral body is then registered independently using Mazur's proprietary segmental merge, matching each segmented 3D vertebrae model, captured in the CT, to its actual position on the table, as detected in the fluoro image. Navigation uses an integrated camera with spatial tracking. For improved line of sight, the patient reference frame can be fixated on top of the arm. The snapshot tracker registration is a simple step that adds navigation capabilities to the robotic platform. The robotic arm moves with precision into the pre-planned trajectory, allowing instrumentation to be used through the arm. While stealth navigation allows for real-time visualization of instruments and implants. Mazor X Stealth Edition. And so the next is the Zimmer Biomet and the Rosa robotic system. This is actually a platform that encompasses knee, spine, and brain surgery with FDA clearance for all three in 2019. However, what we're focusing on is brain mapping, which improves targeting with precision and accuracy. If this requires less time under anesthesia and decreased recovery time and length of stay, and importantly to patients, no hair shaving. So a little bit about this technology.
So I just want to share with you something that's in the pipeline, very exciting technology by a company called Neuralink, which was founded by Elon Musk in 2016. As of the end of this month, they have received 205 hundred $205 million in investor funding um, towards what they call a brain machine interface technology. And this has been described to be anticipated to be used for the treatment of brain injuries um, with motor deficit such as quadriplegia or things like ALS and multiple sclerosis. More conceptually, however, this is freedom from biologic form. And like most immediate need for a robot is to be able to manipulate these threads and insert them into the brain. So the implant is kind of like this little puck of the secret sauce active electronics and the electrodes are these tiny little flexible threads that each at the very end have multiple little electrodes that if you get those electrodes next to a neuron, they can record what that neuron is doing. The nature of the device that we're implanting and the way that we're implanting it allows for minimal reaction of the brain tissue to our device to increase the lifetime. In order to do that, the devices are extremely fragile. The threads that we insert that contain the electrodes are tiny, sort of on the order of like 50 microns wide, five microns thick, 20 millimeters long. So if you take one of them and sort of toss it into the air, it'll sort of float up like a piece of hair. And those tiny little flexible hairs are too small for a human to handle, even like with tweezers, and that's where the robot comes in. Vision and software, essentially high reliability software is really important. We've gone from not really being able to track the moving brain, which is critical for humans because the human brain moves a lot, to having this OCT-based system that essentially gives us this 21 hertz real-time view of a 3D volume of the brain that we're looking at. They're trying to do is like very fine uh, computer vision tasks and movement tasks to grab these threads. It's like an extremely hard engineering problem. I would say the next big so while this idea seems incredibly abstract and maybe something based out of science fiction, this is a primate model that they released earlier this year. This is Pager. He's a nine-year-old macaque who had a Neuralink placed in each side of his brain about six weeks ago. If you look carefully, you can see that the fur on his head hasn't quite fully grown back yet. He's learned to interact with a computer for a tasty banana smoothie delivered through a straw. We can interact with the Neuralinks simply by pairing them to an iPhone, just as you might pair your phone to a Bluetooth speaker. The links record from more than 2,000 electrodes implanted in the regions of Pages' motor cortex that coordinate hand and arm movements. Neurons in this region modulate their activity with intended hand movement. For example, some might become more active when he moves his hand up and others when he moves it to the right. By recording from many neurons and feeding their activity into a decoder algorithm, we are able to predict Page's intended hand movements in real time. First, we calibrate the decoder by recording neural activity as Pager uses the joystick to move a cursor to targets presented on the screen. As he's playing this game, we are wirelessly streaming in real time the firing rates from thousands of neurons to a computer. Using these data, we calibrate the decoder by mathematically modeling the relationship between patterns of neural activity and the different joystick movements they produce. After only a few minutes of calibration, we can use the output from the decoder to move the cursor instead of the joystick. Pages still moves the joystick out of habit, but as you can see, it's unplugged. He's controlling the cursor entirely with decoded neural activity. Our goal is to enable a person with paralysis to use a computer or phone with their brain activity alone. Because they wouldn't be able to move a joystick, they would calibrate the decoder by imagining hand movements to targets. One of the things the Neuralinks allow Pager to do is to play his favorite video game, Pong. To control his paddle on the right side of the screen, Pager simply thinks about moving his hand up or down. We've removed the joystick altogether. Now that he's up to speed, let's increase the difficulty and see how well Pager can play with the Neuralink.
As you can see, Pager is amazingly good at mind upon. He's focused and he's playing entirely of his own volition. It's not magic. The reason Neuralink works is because it's recording and decoding electrical signals from the brain. And so the surgical robot market is expected to reach $275 billion in 2025. And clearly the industry powerhouses have recognized that and invested heavily in this technology. However, there remains a need for augmented reality technologies with 3D imaging navigation to continue to improve and increase in efficiency and accuracy, which translates to improved outcomes and quicker recovery for all patients. Thank you for your time and attention. My contact information is below. And again, I apologize for not being with y'all in Vegas.